So in previous videos, I've discussed the idea of how to make your penis bigger. But one of the things we haven't talked about is would a bigger penis actually make you happier? And as somebody who has more than doubled the volume of his penis over the years, I have some thoughts to share on this topic, as well as having interviewed a couple people who I think you would like to get to know who also have some thoughts worth listening to. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Kaylin. I'm an ecstatic spirituality coach. I host this YouTube channel, Ecstatic Self, where we explore the intersection of sex, sexuality, meditation, spirituality, finding belonging, and being our radiant selves. I've also written a couple books on these topics, and I work with men around the world on finding their most awesome version of themselves. So our dicks, our peckers, our willies, our schlongs, our manhood, our guy downstairs. I think it's really interesting that we use the word manhood to describe our penises because it's as if this one body part could define essence of our masculinity, which is of course absurd. We are all so much more than just one thing, one body part, one idea, one image. But these sex organs are so much more than just about the pleasure they bring us or the pleasure they bring our partner. They are a demarcator of us. In society, penises are sometimes things that are discussed. They're gossiped about. They're given sideways glances in locker rooms. Now, depending on whether you circulate more in gay or straight society, this may be more or less important to you. Obviously, in the straight world, women may not know what you're packing, and you may have less opportunity to interact with other men in a naked experience, and they might care less. In the gay world, however, a lot of the people who we're friends with have also been, or might possibly be, our lovers. There is a large social cachet given to guys for having a big dick. They often are seen as being more desirable. And whether or not we choose to believe these ideas, whether we believe to accept that a certain penis size is more valuable than another, it is something we do have to be aware of, that it is a prevalent trope within our society. So in other videos, I have dived into this idea of what is penis enlargement, how do we do it? I'm going to be doing another video on this topic in just a couple weeks, but for me, I have explored penis enlargement on and off since my college years. I've personally gone from about seven and a half inches in length to over nine inches in length and about four and a half inches in girth to eight and a half inches in girth. So it went from being pretty darn big to, wow, that's really big. And so my experience of people interacting with me has changed quite a bit over that time. You know, earlier on, I did have sexual partners tell me that I wasn't big enough to satisfy them, or at least thick enough to satisfy them. They would call me names, pencil dick. They would talk about axes who had a bigger penis that they really enjoyed. So I developed a definite a feeling of inferiority because I wasn't enough. And as I've grown and as I've achieved this much larger size, I've definitely watched people's responses change and watched people have a, generally a very positive, enthusiastic experience, whether it's from seeing me naked or being a sexual partner or even just seeing my bulging clothing, really delighting in this larger size. But am I empirically happier? Is my quality of life improved through this experience? I'm going to share my experience in just a little bit, but before we do, I want to introduce you to someone. His name is Ben. He's the creator of Male Hanger, which is a penis enlargement device that I've personally used. And one of the great things that Ben does is he actually documents his penis enlargement journey. He has gone from being six inches in length to over eight and a half inches in length, and his girth has grown commensurately. Ben is straight. He's in a monogamous relationship, so he probably doesn't show it off in person as much as some other guys might, but you can check out his Reddit to see his video and photographic proof of the gains he's made. So hey guys, I am here with Ben, the creator of Male Hanger, a penis enlargement device that is awesome. So he consults and works with guys all around the world, helping them increase the size of their penis, and he himself is a happy customer. What has changed in your life with this? Have you become a happier, more confident person? Has your partner felt more satisfied? Um, overall, yes, I'm definitely happier from having a bigger penis. I'm a lot more confident overall. I've also had positive benefits sexually. It's definitely a boon with certain positions. You get more reach, so to speak. If you've got a healthy sex life and a healthy attitude toward it, it can definitely be a boost for sure, having more there. <laughs> it's nice to be able to do things like go to a swimming pool or a beach and not have the stereotypical George Costanza on side field moment where, you know, the cold water causes shrinkage because that's not much of a concern when your average flaccid size is over five and a half inches. So it's like, it's, it's fun for sure. And it's interesting. It's always, I've always been in, also interested in human psychology. It's, it's this, I guess you could, I hate to say stereotypical stuff that you would expect to hear. Improved confidence in the bedroom, better performance. I have even had somebody claim that Getting a bigger penis, I think they gained about an inch and a half over the course of about a year. 
they were finally able to have the confidence they needed at work to ask for a promotion, believe it or not. <laughs> so it, it's always interesting to see how increasing penis size had an impact on their life and even their their personality in general. A lot of times if you're so, and I'm sure you'll, you'll be aware of this too, if you're so negatively focused on one part of your body or one thing that's impacting you so strongly, even if it's just your penis, it's not just your penis, it's also obviously having a negative detrimental effect on your psychology and your overall well-being. So yeah, it definitely matters. At the same time, it shouldn't be the entire focus of your feeling good about yourself or feeling better about yourself if you're not feeling so great at that point in your life. I've told myself as well as my wife that I think I will stop at no more than another inch and a half to two inches. Now, I'm somebody who identifies as pretty autosexual. I really enjoy sex with myself. It's something I've enjoyed since I was a teenager. And one of my biggest fantasies, one of my biggest turn-ons had always been muscle and cock growth. That imagining myself as more hung, more muscular really turned me on. So for me, yeah, having a bigger dick was something that was like really important to me and, and really made me feel very juicy and aroused. Additionally too, given my really horrific history of bullying and being completely diminished and made to feel invalidated by my peers growing up, specifically around my masculinity. Having a more masculine presenting body made me feel more secure and more happy. So for me, yeah, it was a big change in a positive direction. And additionally too, you know, I go to the gym every day, I'm a gay man, so I'm in gay spaces, I'm on the gay apps, and having a body that guys affirm makes me feel better. It does improve my quality of life and a day-to-day -day experience. However, there is something to become aware of, which is when you start to go so far in one direction, you can actually start to have an inverse experience where you can be too beautiful or too jacked or too hung, where people actually start to reduce you down to just that one thing. They stop seeing you as being a human being and just being an object that they covet. John Holmes later in his life became very jaded and very angry at people, he began to think that people only wanted him for his penis and nothing more. And he went from being this really sweet young guy to being this really angry, bitter man because he had been reduced down to just being a dick. Since going through my enlargement experience, I can say I have now, two out of two times I've gone for a massage, have had my massage therapist try to take advantage of me. And, you know, I didn't go there with the intent for those things. And if you watched my previous video, the first time it was really traumatic. I ended up getting injured because of the experience. The second time I stopped them, but I'm also becoming aware of that you know, people might think that they can just do this because of the way I look. We all the time hear models saying that they feel like they can't really be appreciated for being a full human being because people just see them as a sex object or someone to be seen around to increase their own status. So I wanted to bring up this question to somebody who works with beautiful people all the time. His name is Finn Deerhart. I've actually interviewed him on this channel before, so you can check out his two interviews with me. In addition to being a sexual therapist, he also works for Himeros, which is an erotic porn website channel that does more artistic, grounded pornography. And he coaches the models offset to see how were they doing? How are you feeling? Do you need to talk about it? And so he quite literally works with some of the most beautiful, the most built, the most hung guys, the most coveted guys in the world. And I thought he'd have some interesting thoughts to share. So Finn, with all of your experience, all the people you interact with, tell me, does having pretty privileged, does having a bigger dick, bigger muscles, an awesome jawline, does that ultimately make you happier or are those just things that give transient happiness or are they things that come with their own baggage? I think that like pretty privilege can make a part of somebody happy, you know, but there are many parts of us. Specifically to like the penis question, it's like a more hyper-focused, the ability to do more with a, an appendage or something to like make someone feel more. I mean, it's often like something about power and like something that leads us away from inside what it, what's really wanting to be felt or contacted. And I have this discussion with guys of all sizes, all different kinds of penis sizes, whether or not somebody's really hung or not, it doesn't absolve that person of the fears, which underlies almost everybody's insecurity would be like fear of inferiority and helplessness. These are ubiquitous, universal human experiences and feelings that we have to feel in order to be whole in our culture especially culture of men, we're not comfortable with it and we've been taught not to be and we've been taught to feel deep shame if we actually even get near those feelings. So the natural adaptation away from those feelings is to construct a strong body or get a big penis and like 
it doesn't resolve the problem. With your experience working with him, Rose, and you're working with some of the most beautiful men, people we all know, people that are totally out there on social media that we would all recognize, we would think they have it all. Are they the happiest people you've met? Are they the people who are really thriving? No, in fact, that's been such a trip for me to be in the inside like that, to see the dichotomy that they live with and that they're choosing for themselves is to like embody the cultural projection of desire, which there's a level to that, which they get to go, yeah, yeah, I did that, like everyone wants me. <laughs> but then like the delta on the inside of what they're dealing with and struggling with, they often feel unseen for because nobody's looking for that or don't want them to express that they feel scared. And I've met so many of these models that are having you know, significant challenges, mental health challenges, issues around substances, and just not able to be present in their bodies that are sculpted and beautiful. And so to see, you know, because people out here in, in America or the world will watch porn and they see these images of people that are really beautiful, idealized, I should say, and the assumption is made that they have something that I don't have, and that's not true. And it all really can, I think everybody, no matter what your body looks like, has to come to that realization at some point, and if we want to be whole, we have to look at what's inside of us, and that's just, that's the work. I'm a big believer that there's nothing wrong with an outward journey. Like, if you want to make those outward changes and that brings you joy, great, but it can't be the only journey. Like, there also has to be that inner one that goes hand in hand with it. Totally. Like I said, it makes a part of us happy, maybe, right? Like, there's a part of me, like, I, like, walked out of, like, therapy one day, and I'd had this really deep, rich conversation with my therapist, and I walked by a studio that was, like, a plastic surgery place, and it was, like, cool sculpting, and I was, like, oh, like, I could just, like, get, and it just had this, like, desire to get, like, cool sculpting, and I thought it was so funny to have left that space with therapy and to immediately be, like, well, if I could just get, like, fix my, my stomach, you know? <laughs> In the Western mind, the male has been really conditioned to put a lot of existential importance on his penis. So much so that when men lose function of their penises, they feel highly suicidal. They feel like they don't mean anything in the world anymore. They lose a sense of purpose. Men who've been in combat and have been like in a in like a situation where there's like um, explosions and they've received shrapnel to the body, before they check their limbs, they check their dicks to make sure their dicks are okay. And that's how strong it is. Um, and when they suffer from unreliable erections, like it can really fuck with a man's feeling of like I belong on the planet. You know, so there's a lot of religious transference onto the penis as like some sort of almost becomes idolatry, right? Like it's going to rescue me from the existential woes of life, and it won't. <laughs> and though we love them, we do. <laughs> And we would think of the word we use sometimes we describe it as our manhood. Like, really, yeah. how much does this one body part have to do about your worth as a man and a human being? It's hard for all of us to take full responsibility for our experience, including our pain. And when if, long after we lose our youth or our bodies in any kind of, like, form that we consider perfect and beautiful, it's like, what else is left in life? I want to be able to be grounded and rooted into a deep sense of self and purpose that helps me feel even more alive than whenever I was younger, you know? Beautifully said. Now, something I do want to bring up is that even though I've grown a lot bigger over the years, I have to admit, my penis doesn't actually feel that big to me now. I look at it and it just seems average sized. Like in my head, I know I'm bigger than normal. And sometimes when I compare it with other dicks, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I am bigger. But I don't think that day to day. When I see myself, I'm like, okay, that's that's a nice penis, but I'm used to it. It just feels normal. And this is a thing that happens to everybody. Our brains are built to adapt to our current circumstances, to feel normal. For example, if you get some new granite countertops that you think are gorgeous, I promise you after a couple months, you're gonna stop noticing them. They're not gonna feel special anymore. There's a term for this, it's called the hedonistic reset. And it serves a biological purpose, evolutionarily speaking, that we want to be able to adapt to our current surroundings and let them feel normal so we can stay on the outlook for the next thing that we either need to hunt, guard against, or use for our survival. And so you'll see people work for years to get that job, to get that promotion, to get that award, to get that partner, to get that body. And after they attain it, it starts to feel normal again. It doesn't feel special anymore. And that's why if you wait to be happy until you reach your goal, you'll never actually be happy because there will just be a new goalpost. There'll be a new thing you have to strive for, a new thing that you want to achieve. This is why we see beautiful people continue to get plastic surgery to the point that, that they sometimes ruin their looks because it's never good enough. This is why we see people who have amazing bodies still pushing themselves to get leaner and more cut because they don't see themselves as being good enough. And so one of the things I really encourage my clients and myself and people I love to 
to do is learn to be happy where you are. Like still have your goals, still have the things you want to achieve, but say, hey, I appreciate where I'm at now. I find joy where I'm at now. I find contentment where I'm at now. And if I want to gain five pounds of muscle or I want another inch of cock or I want X, Y, Z, go ahead and do it, but don't wait for that moment to make you happy because chances are very good you will get there and after a little bit it will stop being exciting for you. Now that said, I am genuinely happier that I did take the effort to grow my penis. Like it has brought me greater joy. But at the end of the day, as I go about my day, do I really think in the moment it's really changed my quality of life? Mm, probably not so much. I'm still happy I've achieved these goals, but it didn't provide this panacea that I had hoped for. It didn't suddenly cure my mental angst. It didn't get rid of my anxiety. It didn't prevent me from ever feeling depressed or sad again. That work all has to happen internally. That work has to be there because no one external thing will solve your problems. Like I love my husband. He is an amazing buffer that helps me stay more balanced and stable and joyful in life, but he's not responsible for my well-being. He can enhance my well-being and he does, but I cannot be reliant on this external thing to make me feel good enough. I have to find that within and then bring that to my partnership. So the third person I wanted to meet is actually the person who helped me get my extra few inches of girth. His name is Dr. Taj. He is a urologist and surgeon in the DC area, and in my opinion, the best surgeon for penis enlargement. He works with guys all over the world on their penile health, on their erection strength, and of course, to make their penises bigger. So I thought he would be a really great resource to talk to us about what he's seen in patients and how they feel before and after penis enlargement. Today, I'm here with Dr. Taj, and I want to ask him, as kind of like the penis doctor specialist who has seen thousands or tens of thousands of penises and worked with men to get bigger, does having a bigger penis make men happier? What's your experience? I see hundreds of patients a month uh, wanting to change the shape of their penis. And I believe there is a legitimate reason for patients who want to enlarge their penis. I think it's not the body dysmorphic disorder. I see patients who are normal. They don't have medical conditions. They don't have psychological conditions, all socioeconomic backgrounds, gay, straight, who just want to have a thicker penis. I believe in a large segment of the population who want to enlarge their penis, their confidence improves. I We try to make sure that the patients who are trying to get a penis enlargement, they don't have unrealistic expectations or they don't suffer from a severe pathological body dysmorphic disorder. Some people, Kaylin, they believe that their wife left them because their penis was small. And that is a, yeah, people that legitimately is, believe that, that is not a good, uh, that is not true. I, I mean, I don't know any woman who would leave their husband with two kids for her husband is missing two inches. A lot of patients who are having what we call the, the locker room phobia, they don't want to walk around with the, you know, with a feeling that the people are looking at their penis. I do believe that a segment of my populations are like that. They are mostly growers and they hate the fact that they have a small penis in a flaccid state. Right? I know you've had experiences too of people making their penises bigger and saying it's actually too big. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Sometimes men get a penuma to satisfy their wives and that is, I believe, is a big mistake because it's very hard to satisfy women in the first place. So what happened is they get a larger penis, they get a thicker penis and now their wife says, you're too thick for me. So I always say, listen, don't listen to your wife. Do everything that you want to do for yourself. And sometimes, maybe three, four patients a year, their uh, guy says, listen, I need to downsize because my penis is too thick and my wife is complaining. And I think you bring up a really great point, which is anything that you do, there should be an element of doing it for yourself and not for other people because other people's opinions will change over time and who you're interacting with will change. You know, knock on wood, you're married to the same person for as long as you want to be married to them. But like, this has to be a decision for you at the end of the day. Would you agree with that? hundred percent. I believe women should not get cosmetic surgery for their husbands. They shouldn't get a nose job or boob job just because their husband says it. It's a big mistake. Actually, very ethical plastic surgeons, they don't let the husband be in the room in the consult. Interesting. Because a lot of con husbands are like, listen, I want a bigger boob, a bigger boob. And that is it. They kick him out of the room. They're like, get out. This is her body. Yeah. And it's the same principle for the male. You want to live with that penis all for all your life. And you know, men go away, you know, you may lose uh, your husband or your boyfriend or your wife, 
people come and go yeah. and you're stuck with a device that you wanted to do for that person and it's a big mistake because for example they play with sex toys and they notice that their wife is moaning more with yeah. a larger sex toy they did an actually a study of 87 women from 18 to 65 at the UC Irvine where they gave him a six toys of different sizes with a, a blue color, so there was no racial kind of prejudice. And interestingly, the penis that they love to use was one inch thicker than the average male. So average male is about 5.3 inches. So this, the one that they picked was 6.4 inches. Okay. So women are actually driving this, believe it or not, which is not good. I don't think penis size is going to dramatically change your life. It will improve it, but it will not change your life. Most people you interact with in your life have no idea what you're packing downstairs. You don't go out into social situations and just flash your dick around. Most people, the percentage of the population is going to know and care is very small considering the amount of people you interact with day to day. Absolutely. I do a lot of virtuals. I believe I did virtual with yeah. you. You know, I see patients from all across the United States, Europe, Canada, everywhere. And you know, these patients are amazing. A lot of them are just wanting to improve their life, improve their cosmesis. And that, those are the good candidates. You just want to improve your cosmetic enhancement of the penis, but nothing else. Yeah. It's not a, it's not to change your life forever. It's just that you have some money sitting around and you want to invest in your penis. So given all this, what do you think? Do you think a big dick would make you happier? Would a bigger dick make you happier? You know, as a coach, I'm always happy to help people achieve their goals, but I also want to remind them, happiness is where you are right now. If you can find happiness in your given situation, no matter your size, no matter your level of health or fitness, no matter your relationship status, your employment status, how much money you have, if you can find joy here, then you've won. And it doesn't matter where you go or what body you have or who you hook up with, you can find joy there too. But if you are dependent on these external things to find happiness, it will always be a struggle. It will always be a race to find that next thing to give you a lift. I look at people in my family who struggle with addiction, and it's always like they're waiting for that next hit, that next burst of endorphins, whether it's from shopping or alcohol or sex. And then once they have it, they're craving their next. The same thing happens to all of us to a certain degree of saying, hey, I want this thing, give it to me. And then I have it, but it's not lastingly fulfilling. Real permanent joy is an internal experience. And so I hope you're able to find that. I hope you're able to achieve what you want to achieve in the world. And at the same time, I hope you are able to learn that the magic you seek has always been within. My name is Kaylin. This is Ecstatic Self. So much love, so much blessings to you. Namaste.